Hello, agentpreneurs, and welcome to episode 82 of the Daily List Report. As always, we try to bring you amazing guests from the industry to share their knowledge and their expertise and their insights on what's happening in the real estate market today. Today, we've got George Kenner. He's with Real Estate Market Solutions. He's got a tremendous background. This guy was the, let's see, uh, all kinds of awards, Realtor of the Year Award from the Pacific Southwest Association of Realtors. Uh, importantly, a big award. He won the Champion of Home Award from the California Association of Realtors in 2013. He's an active YouTuber. I'm going to direct you to his channel. We'll post a link to his channel in the comments. While you're here on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the little bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our great guests on this show. So without further ado, I'm going to bring George on. George, why don't you say hello to the agentpreneurs of List Reports? Hello, agentpreneurs, and thank you very much for having me as a guest. If I can ever help any of you and you have a question beyond this, please let me know. I'll do all I can for you. George, thank you so much for that. You know, in the, the short time that I've gotten to know you, I can tell that you are a very diligent person. You very you care very much about this industry uh, from an advocacy, pers- advocacy sorry, perspective. And so I'm excited to have a conversation with you today. Um, George, you know, I think I would be remiss if we didn't start by talking a little bit about your perspective on what's happening in the real estate industry today, you know, specifically with, with respect to coronavirus and some of the changes. We've got low inventory across the country. We've got historically low mortgage rates. There's a lot of things that are going on. So why don't you just sort of briefly introduce yourself and then maybe talk a little bit about from your perspective what you see happening in the market right now? Well, I, I think that the I'll call it the skill set that's necessary for most realtors is expanding. I recently saw an article in Inman News and they said our number one priority right now, based upon a survey that Inman did, is we all have to learn how to save more money. And part of that is based upon the volume and the, the pace at which technology is changing. Also, we're, we're right at the epicenter of privacy and um, digital imagery. Uh, Probably many of the people that are watching are now presenting forms from their MLS to give to the photographer that address copyright. I don't want to go into that in detail uh, because it's different in every location. But in California, we're we're looking at a law called the California Consumer Privacy. Basically, in in my learning, says that if of a house, even the buyer has rights afterwards to deletion of that information. So the brokerage that I work with, we're demanding our copyright. So because traditionally in copyright, according to our attorneys, we have the right to destroy the data. Mm-hmm. So th- that's a very important step to us is um, we had discussed briefly in our, I'll call it our pre-discussion that there's a whole industry of people out there that want to take our commission after we've earned it. They're called real estate attorneys. And if someone feels wrong, they're going to go to one. And I don't want to, from the the point of risk management, create any problems for anyone involved. If you've earned the commission, you need to be able to keep that commission and not have to defend it. And CCPA and and digital privacy is something that, at least at the upper ends of brokerage, um, are being considered. It hasn't really filtered down to agents as much, but it is there in a consideration. Yeah, interesting. You know, George, what I think is interesting about you, right, is that, you know, you've had a varied career, right? You started on the mortgage side, you became a real estate agent. I'm curious for you to share a little bit about your career, that transition, and frankly, your adoption of technology. There's, you know, when when our viewers are hearing right now this idea of rights around photographs and, and someone's ability to be able to take those down, you know, it's very nuanced, it's very in the weeds, and it's important, it's critical, right? And I think a lot of agents struggle to stay on top of all of the stuff that's happening. There's all these trends and laws, and there's just so much going on. So how did you, how did you get to where you are, George, in, in, in your career and, and caring so much about all of these different facets of the business? To, to give a very a short chronology and how I entered, um, I was a federal agent and I was injured on the job. I had very, very high law scores in the Federal Agency Academy that I went to, and I literally had a photographic memory for rules. Mm -hmm. So when I went into banking, it was as though I just had to memorize the rules, and I ended up knowing the rules better than most underwriters. There was a term that we used to use in mortgage banking called FHA guru. Well, I was one. (laughs) I would show the underwriter how to do the deal, but I felt as though my role in advocacy for my client was very important. 
So the when I first started in the industry, at the very beginning, they were still delivering the MLS book. And then we went on to the, um, the, the industry transitioned and went into um, the MLS. Well, at the same time, on the mortgage side, we were, you know, we already had the computer access to everyone's credit report, but, and the appraisers had access to the MLS books, that type of thing. But with the advent of the internet, things like desktop underwriting, all of those modules came on and we had to be involved from the mortgage side. So that's really where the technology came in, along with some of the technology that I learned as a federal agent. Well, in 2007, when the market crashed, um, I had been using all of that technology on the banking side, and I understood all of the rules, and I started to become an advocate for people that were being mistreated by the banks. Now, if they were mistreating the bank, I had nothing to do with it. But if the bank was making tremendous errors or illegal actions, I felt a responsibility. We formed a task force called the Distress Task Property Task Force. So there was a point in time when Bank of America was making some promises to do things and they weren't quite, you know, the communication system wasn't working properly. Not to slam Bank of America because this was something happening with all banks. So I did a video address with a little flip video and it was very powerful. Um, within probably 15 minutes of posting it on YouTube, I had the head of all loss mitigation from Bank of America on the phone with me and we corrected wow. the problem, which was great. And um, from there, one of my friends gave me uh, the editing suite from Premiere Pro and After Effects. And I actually did a video to the CEO of Wells Fargo Bank and I was holding a virtual fireball in my hand and I tossed it at the screen. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, so from there, you know, my, my channel started to grow and I really wasn't even concentrating on it. I was trying to make money with um, real estate, but I, I understood the value of the tool. A few years ago, I ended up moving to some new technology, which is the 3D dimensional tour with Matterport. And I was at one point in time, a very big advocate for that system. Mm -hmm. And then technology has changed. I invest thousands and thousands of dollars in this technology. And now you can go out and do a Matterport with your phone. Yeah. So now this leads to a point that's very important for realtors. And this is one of the things that I see and we talk about. I call it the democratization of our imagery. And what's happening with the advent of our phones and being able to add filters and basically adjust as though you were in Lightroom, you can make much better pictures. I have turned a bunch of my friends onto an app that is called Photo Perfect App. And what it does is from your iPhone or your Android, it will take a HDR photograph. Then you can go in and if that's off, you can even adjust that. Now, from the standpoint of can you avoid the photographer and save the money? Some agents are thinking that. I even have photographers that are using some of those products to use what they call pickup pictures. If you need to refresh the pictures, in, say two weeks into the listing, and something was not right with the property, you may be able to capture it with that app. Now, here's the, the cost of the app, a dollar a month. Hmm. Why would you not try it? Mm -hmm. So. You know, that was that was that's one just one of the things that is happening. There is a new camera on the market or in system that is the Insta 360 R, which will make a 360 degree camera. Um, I was working with one of my friends, the same guy that owns Photo Perfect app, and we figured out a way to block the view of the person that is taking the video because many of your viewers out there right now are thinking that they're not attractive enough to be on YouTube or mm -hmm. to be to be photographed. Well, let me tell you, I'm ugly. <laughs> I can do it, you can do it. It's not a problem. But we figured out a way to block that and he's actually in the process of patenting. Now, what I did was I stepped out of my normal area and I encourage everyone to do that. The thought process that is involved in bringing you know just general thought into your practice is very strong you may invent something that you never expected you know, we were sitting here and looking at the quality of what this video would do and i said if we could just take ourselves out of the picture and next thing you know i run out to the garage i grab three or four things and boom we're, we're working on something that's patentable but 
Now, here's, here's why I think it's so valuable. If you even go out and do the Matterport, you're going to have a monthly hosting fee. If you get the 360 video, you can post it in YouTube and Facebook, no cost. Mm -hmm. The cost of the camera is about $500. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, you're going to need about $500 worth of equipment. That's about what's half of what some realtors pay in San Diego for a professional photographer. It's a risk to reward. Yeah. If you can use this imagery and you can use that technology at one point in time for my Matterport system, I had about $8,000 in hardware invested. Mm -hmm. Now you're down to $600 and may in fact have a superior product. So mm -hmm. following this stuff, it can be very beneficial to the realtor, the real estate team, the brokerage that's trying to save money and stay on the cutting edge. Yeah. But George, I real quick, you know, that's, it's, it's a good point, right? Because I, I, I know, and I'm sure you do, you're one of them, a lot of agents who really enjoy the tinkering side of this business, right? They really enjoy adopting new technology and trying them. And what we're trying to do on this show is bring a lot of this advice and this thought leadership you know, to our agents. Um, I reviewed an app ooh, a month ago or so, we'll, we'll post a link here called Double Take. And it's a very simple app. And it's only available on iPhone right now. And at that, more modern iPhones, you know, but it allows you to actually record out of two cameras at the same time. So it's kind of nice because you're walking around, let's say giving a tour of a home, you can record the front facing camera and the rear facing camera simultaneously without having to know how to edit video and things like that, right? For those who know how to edit, mm -hmm. that's not a hard thing to do, but it's really nice. And so, you know, to your other point, the the cost of entry, right, is relatively low. This app you referred to, a, a buck a month, right? $500 is not nothing, right? But for the return that you can get on that over time, it's not bad either. So I think that's really interesting. Yeah, the um, what I see is a reluctance. I've been told, George, what are you going to be? Are you going to be one of California's top brokers? Or are you going to be a photographer? And I said, can I be both? Hmm. There's a certain industry of reluctance to stay in your lane. Well. I think the most successful agents are going to realize that they're going to have to put their turn signal on a little bit and move this direction. One of the um, other products that I use is called Studio HQ, and I can send you the app. I can send you the link for this. And what it is is it's a digital storytelling methodology. It'll allow them to put in just those portions of the property that you'd like to have, and you can you can email it, you can text it, you can post it in social media, and it'll give an entirely greater system. But we're moving into uh, a technology with artificial intelligence where if you are trying to sell the community, there may in fact be community imagery that you can import and save and reuse in your listings. And at one point in time in my life, I was involved in the car industry. And what we used to want to do with our advertising is get them to the dealership where they could buy. I don't really want to produce an entire digital replica twin of the property. I want to bring the people to the property where I believe the decision is made. Hmm. For as many homes and as many transactions as, as I've been involved with, what I would say is generally, and you could ask your clients, you know, think of it yourself. When did you make the decision to buy the house? Generally, if you're purchasing with a partner or spouse, you talk to the agent. There's always this, I'll call it guarded relationship where they do not enter into the decision-making process. Right. And you talk to your agent, you may love your agent, maybe your brother, but as soon as you're out of the earshot of the agent, you say, I like it or I don't. And the pursuit starts, but it's at the house. We want to get them to the house. I don't want to put them in a 3D tour. Mm -hmm. I want to the property and I don't necessarily maybe want to show them the oil stain from the Porsche that was in the garage mm -hmm. that can be repaired but if the if the person gets a negative impression and you show you know everything in its entirety you could do that and I feel we have a duty to our client to show the property in its best light to bring people to the house so that's just part of my philosophy and um interesting George how how do you um how should agents think about doing that today? Obviously, it's it's a little bit compromised right now, right? Some people, frankly, don't want, most people, I would argue, probably don't want people traipsing through their house on a Sunday morning for an open house, right? So it's compromised now. So how, but I understand your point, right? And I like the analog to the car industry, which is you got to get them to the lot to see the car, right? You got to get them behind a yeah. the test drive. You got to do that, right? That's the point of sale. So 
How should our agents be thinking about doing that today, given the constraints that we well, have? Um, I'll go back historically with me and my own money, because I think that will help most of the viewers. When I bought the Matterport system, shortly afterwards, I learned of the Ryko 360 camera. Mm -hmm. And I thought if I were an agent, what I would do is I would go out and buy the Ryko and say, I can do the same thing. I can give you that dimensional um, perspective. So I learned that with the Ryko camera, I could take one of the pictures and instantly post it in social media. Mm -hmm. Now, what we generally do is we want to tell a story and most stories come in chapters or parts. If I could take and link that one image of the most favorable portion of the property to the rest of the property, I was in superior position. Now, with a Matterport camera, when I first started, you couldn't pull a single image. Right. You know, you didn't get a three, a single 360, the costs involved and all that. I was posting the, the Ryko picture for free, but I had to have both cameras to learn that. But from the standpoint of, you know, why did I do it? Um, I love the technology. I got to admit, I'm a little bit of a photo geek, yeah. but I was looking for even an additional way to help the people that I would either sell the Matterport service to or um, for another agent. If I did that for them, there's other industries that Matterport is used in sometimes just that single 360. The other thing I did with that camera is one day I went to the pier in Imperial Beach and I took just I put put it on a monopod. I set the Ryko in the middle. I took a picture. I couldn't believe how many of my friends on Facebook saw it. Hmm. It turned into a list of just one picture. Hmm. So, you know, some of our clients are becoming more and more in tune to what can be done. Um, my girlfriend just showed me, I was going through her Facebook page and some of her friends had just fabulous blended photographs. And I said, who's doing that? Yeah. She said, George, you don't know about this app? Hmm. And it took me to an app where there's literally, it's a Photoshop quality where you take a background and isolate your picture and blends the two together. You're on social media like that. Hmm. So, you know, when it, when is all of this changes and I'm going to call it, it's, it's reduced in price. It's democratized yes. where you don't necessarily have to have a photographer. We've got to learn that. And if I can do it, I'm, I'm everyone's competitor. They're my competitor in this industry. If I go out to a listing appointment and I can show them the digital imagery and explain to them, your home is beautiful, but I have to share it. No one is going to come to it. Many of these items are not visible in the MLS. So I, in fact, sold a home, my own home, to another broker who had looked at all the information and in the confidential remarks, I said, see the Matterport and the full layout video and everything at this web address in the confidential remarks, which was allowable in the San Diego system. Yeah. She called me and wanted to come and see the house. And I said, what do you think of the Matterport? She says, I haven't seen it. Many agents don't read it. You know, we take in the information at the minimum to do it. So, and I understand that. If you, if you can take and just adjust it a little bit more to look a little deeper, you may make a little more money. Yeah. I saw yeah. the house. And what, what it ended up happening was she had a special need for the property. I had a four car garage. She needed to segregate the garage. I actually took the Matterport, took a still image. I inserted a wall and then sent it to her. Hmm. Sale, done. Very interesting. Very interesting. You know, George, let me ask you a question. So we, I did a show with a company called Pad Styler, uh, virtual staging. Uh, and we sure. have a relationship with this company and we've made this available to our agents at a really good price. Um, what are your thoughts on virtual staging? I, I didn't ask you this before. I'm just curious to get your take on it. Uh, the, I, virtual staging is a great thing utilized in the right way. If you clearly explain to everybody that it's been virtual staged, yes. that's a good thing. But yes. if you go in and make corrections, it's kind of like, and, and I come from old school. If you go in and Photoshop a view of the ocean yes. and you take out the telephone pole and the wire, you've created a liability for yourself. That's right. In California, you have a responsibility to hold the imagery for a certain uh, that was used in advertising for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. So you you know that's the broker in me speaking. Mm -hmm. Agents mm -hmm. don't, don't necessarily care about that. Yeah. And in California, you know we have agencies where there's one broker and there's 300 agents, how much supervision can be done? Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I, but I'm, I want to keep every one of my commissions. 
No, that makes sense. Yeah, we definitely advocate for um, tagging the photo that it's virtually staged. I've been shocked uh, at the quality. It's pretty remarkable. And, and it really does, at least in our estimation, George, it really does, if it's tagged properly, right, uh, and disclosed mm -hmm. properly, it really does give somebody a sense for potentially different styles, right? Because a lot of people just don't have that imagination. That's exactly, you know, that's the point that I was making mm -hmm. was, you know, I virtually staged, but after the fact. I, right. I inserted a wall and said, that's took right. the image, it, set it in there and said, this could be done, you know, would this meet your needs? It took me about an hour and I sold the house and it was my own home. Right. So right. I was, you know, the customer was very happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Since you're, since you're a photography and a, and a tech nerd, George, um, what about drones? What about drone photography? Any thoughts on that? I started out with drone photography. I think that um, when agents use it, they insert too much of it. If you were to sit and watch an edit of uh, a really nicely paced video, average edit time is about four and a half seconds. I want to tease them to the property. I don't want to show them the entire world. In California, there are many no-fly zones. Um, I, the drones that I have used have always been as small and as non unobtrusive as possible. When I got my first FCC license, I used a term called curtilage, which is an area where there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. Mm -hmm. I will not shoot into the curtilage of a neighbor or fly into their area to get a perspective without their opinion. If you do it properly and it's a very small unobtrusive drone, I see the value in it. Mm -hmm. But um, I had a, another friend, realtor of the year, buddy, he got a drone for his son and they're doing five minute drone videos of homes. I'm bored. Right. right. And, and I, I, I took him to one of my videos and opened up my YouTube channel because I do post some of those, but I generally leave them unlisted, my listings, so that I have, I'll call it the, the pathway in to see the video. And I said, look how many hits this guy. Let's go to yours and look at how many hits I got. You know, yours are all falling off at this point in time. So I like to mix it. And too much walking time, not enough transitions, bad music. You, all you have to do is go to a good one. Go find the, find the top agent in your market. Go watch his videos. M many Many of them aren't doing their own. You can find the photographer, but if you have the model, we're all duplicating something. Yes, exactly. So, you know, and we're all learning, you know, that way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, George, you know, as we kind of wrap up here, what's, what's your best advice to our agents who are listening out there who are wrestling right now with, you know, COVID and low inventory and all, all technology and, you know, the democratization of digital imagery, right? There's so much stuff out there. What's, what's your best advice for them? What they, what should they be doing right now during this time? Okay. Number, my most valuable tool right now is digital storytelling off of the studio system. And near Batan is somebody that you would, the CEO of that company. Um, he and I have become friends. He's, it's a fabulous system. Um, it's not that expensive it, and it's what your competitors are going to be going to. Yeah. So, so I, I would say most agents need to become aware of digital storytelling because we are telling a story. We're telling the story of the home and why they want to live there. So, um, I would say that I am a little f fearful of the market. I am not working. I can't work as hard as I would normally like to because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So, I'm utilizing some of this time to do a couple of other things and, you know, branch out, keep my education going. Um, I heard that there were 4.5 million people that didn't make their mortgage payment. Yeah. That could be catastrophic. Uh, the short sale market and the foreclosure market could come back. I carefully research that and maybe sit down with my broker and talk about, you know, the future and the changed market. Gary Keller from Keller Williams um, wrote a good book on change. Um, that's not an endorsement for a brokerage. I'm not a Keller Williams broker, but it's a good book. You know, we're always just the middleman. How do I place myself in the middle in the right place? That's continue your education. Yeah. This idea that you went to high school, got out of college and you're done studying. That's old school. You know, top doctors study every day. Top readers do too. 
Yeah, we call it, at List Reports, uh, George, we call it ultra learning, right? So we're very passionate about what we call ultra learning, which is making sure that you are learning aggressively, regularly, right? If you're not growing, you're dying, right? Stasis is not yeah. a state of growth and a state of health, right? So, so well, yeah, what is, the last thing that I would say was every morning I wake up and go for a walk. It's about five miles. It takes me about an hour. And I listen to positive messages on YouTube. Jim Rohn, um, Tony Robbins, some of it I've heard before, but it, what it does is it sets you and enlightens you to go into another point. Some of my friends are really down right now yeah. because they're, they're seeing their business suffer. If you can brainwash bad, you can brainwash good. Put something good into your brain and positive. Try and do it at the beginning of the day and you know move on. This isn't the end of the world. We only want to be in the middle. Put myself in the middle of deals and place myself in that position. That's what I say. I, I think that's great, right? Um, I know Tony Robbins has this concept. Um, well, priming is not his concept. He has his own version of priming, right? Where you get up and you move your body a little bit. You do a little dance, right? You say some positive words and you go about your day, right? And it gets you anchored in the right mindset and the right frame of reference for all of the decisions uh, that you're going to make and all of the information you're going to be confronted with you know, throughout the day. So I think that's really great advice, George. George, thank you so much for joining today. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time to do this and sharing your knowledge and your expertise and your wisdom. I know it's going to be inspiring for a lot of our agents to you know, get up, start the day right, find the right tools, experiment with things. Again, it's all of this stuff has been democratized, right? It's readily available and accessible, and most of it doesn't cost much money at all. If you can't get a hold of Nir Batan from Studio, because you know I know he's busy, yeah. let me know. I'll hook you up. I will. I will. I'd love to, I'd love to have him on and have a chat about very that. I love storytelling. For your agents. I wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. We'll talk to you real soon, I hope. Thank you. Well, there you have it. I really hope you enjoyed today's show with uh, George Kenner. Um, again, this is his YouTube channel. Please make sure you subscribe. Check out his videos. Check out some of the best processes, best practices that he's putting forward there. Uh, and follow him for more really great information. Um, and of course, while you're there, make sure you subscribe to our channel click the little bell to be notified of our new videos. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I think there was a lot of good information there. There's a lot going on in the world right now, a lot going on in this industry, all the way down to the democratization of digital imagery and photographs and what that means. And, and hopefully what you're finding is that as we bring these great guests on, that they're able to shortcut for you a little bit of the thinking around that. That doesn't absolve you from your own responsibility of thinking and deep thought. That is critical, but these are inputs for you to then take the time to process it. And I can't I can't underscore how important this is, right? This is something that we talk a lot about at List Reports is you have to take time to be deeply thoughtful about the things that you can do. You can take all of these inputs, but you have to process them in your own way and you have to make your own decisions about them. And hopefully there was some great information today to help you do exactly that. So until tomorrow, be safe, be healthy, be happy, and we'll see you soon. Bye.